appreciate you. Um, I just want to read the scripture to you. And uh, uh, Brother John was telling me about service today. And, um, and it really touched my heart. And I'm going to read the scripture. Uh, he was talking about a song that was used uh, today. And, uh, and I want to just read a few verses from it. And of uh, course, tonight, uh, you don't have to, uh, you, can, you, can, you can breathe easy. Say, so, man, praise God, Reverend Bush, and I preach you. Amen. So, uh, <laughs> you can like, praise God. This man is crazy. He can take scream back. We will eventually, Sister Matt. Once we get the other. Yeah, she's all about to scream. She's all about that scream. Amen. But I want to read from Psalm 121 just a few verses because they are very powerful. And, and um, it just, uh, just, just us sharing that moment before service uh, really touched my heart. And because, you know, we have to never lose sight of the fact that no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult your situation may look or feel, Sometimes feelings can overwhelm you. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Feelings and emotions will betray you. Yes. Because they can make you feel like your situation is hopeless. And you can become overwhelmed by it. But we so don't ever, ever forget that God is real. Yes, sir. That Amen. God is real. Amen. And that is at the time when you feel your lowest. And you feel your most hopeless and helpless that God will come in and rescue you. Mm -hmm. But you got to hang in there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes hanging in there is the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. the, it's harder than the prophet. Yes, sir. <laughs> Think about it. Sometimes hanging in there is harder than the problem yes, itself. Sir. Like, God, you want me to keep hanging in here? <laughs> I feel this way, and I'm an emotional wreck, and and and, 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 and people are. Uh, I feel like I'm a laughing stock. I feel like people uh, are looking at me funny, and all these different things. Yeah. And what you don't realize is that sometimes your situation causes you to look a certain way to people, which puts you at in an uneasy place. But you got to remember, they're also going to be looking when God give you the victory. Amen. So don't, don't, right. don't forget that. Amen. So they may be looking at you cross-eyed. Oh, yeah, I thought you was a Christian. And I thought you were supposed to be going to church and all this is falling apart and all this looks bad and your situation looks this way. Remember, they're looking at you, but they're also going to be looking when God bless you. Mm -hmm. So don't forget that part. So hang in there. Sometimes you got to deal with humility and humiliation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to suffer for God. Yes. And sometimes you got to be the, 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 the source of ridicule and, and mockery. Mm -hmm. But you got to also remember that the same people that's looking at you that way while you're going through and what you're going through will also be the same people looking at you when God, when God brings you out. Right. When God blesses you, right? So don't ever forget that. So hang in there. Hang in there. Keep coming to church. Stay faithful. Sometimes you question the decision you made. Amen. That's not unusual. It's not, it's part of the battle. Questioning things is part of the battle. Mm -hmm. And just don't let it question you off of the reality of God. All right? I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. From whence cometh my help. My help that cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Brother John, think about this. And I want you to sit Lynn and I will go all the room. I won't name everybody. I'm just, I'm just sharing. I'm just saying if I call your name, it doesn't mean that I'm putting you, I'm, I'm putting you on front street. I'm just being friendly. <laughs> <laughs> um so many times we look at the hills. The hills are a representation of the magnitude of your problem, your problem, your battle. And that's not what you really need to be looking at. 
I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from what cometh my help. What does the hills represent? They represent the magnitude of what you're going through, but who made them? Who made the hills? That's, that's what you're looking at. Not necessarily the hills, but the one that made the hills. Okay? Because verse 2 gives you the answer. It says, my help. Are you with me? He didn't say your help comes from the hills. Your help comes from the one that made the hills. Yes. My help coming from the Lord that made, right? Uh, yes, sir. Heaven and earth. So yes, the hills are big, but who made them? Mm -hmm. Right? He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel or he that keepeth thee will not slumber. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not what? Slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. Who is thy keeper? The Lord. So you're going through something, it looks big, it's humongous, but don't forget the Lord is your keeper. Amen. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall what? Preserve thee from all evil. What did I tell you to do? Hang in there. Amen. Hang in there. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know. It, it could be somebody online. It could be. But thank you, Brother John, for this. Thank, thank you for sharing. Amen. You don't know what God, in what way God's helping somebody. Amen. Yes, sir. He, he Amen. said, the Lord shall preserve thee from what? Verse 7. All evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Yes. And then verse 8 is the last. The Lord shall preserve thy what? Going out and by coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So anytime when you're going through something, anytime when you're in the midst of a trial or a, trage a tragedy or something that seemingly is overwhelming, pick up Psalm 121 and read it. And it will, it will restore order. It will restore order in your life and help you realize that God's in control. Amen. Amen. Now, even though my situation feels out of control, God's in control. My job in the whole situation is to not suffer your foot to be moved, feet to be, foot to be moved. Uh, let the Lord preserve you. Stay in there. Hang in there. Mm -hmm. Don't quit. Not quitting is a job by itself. All right? I just want to throw that out there. I didn't come here planning on doing that. So you can blame Brother John for that. And um, <laughs> you can blame Brother John for that. Yep. That was free. Didn't cost you nothing. <laughs> Amen. That was all free. Amen. Yeah. And uh, so we are thankful for each and every one of you. Right before we move forward, um, right before we move forward, don't forget Bible study, Tuesday night, and fellowship. Amen. The first Tuesdays of every month is Bible study and fellowship. So, 7 o'clock Bible study, and then we have fellowship after Bible study. We, you, we've been having prayer. We had a great time. If you missed Bible study and prayer last week, yes. it, was, it was a blessing. Yes. And we want to grow that. Yes. We want to grow the Wednesday night services. Amen. Amen. We want to grow it. And then we yes. wanted to get better. Yes. Sunday mornings are growing. Yes. We had five new people last week, five new people this week. Amen. Amen. So God is blessing. Yes, God is sir. blessing. And uh, Sister Dora told us God's handpicking people. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So anyway, we appreciate you and all that God is doing. Also, don't forget the 24th of March is Palm Sunday. The 24th of March is Palm Sunday. And then, of course, the 31st is Easter. And I'm going to have a banner made, and, and we're going to mount it up outside to encourage everybody in the community to come.
comes to our palm service and um, Easter service. All right? It's going to be one. And Sister Samantha, uh, Harry's wife, she was here this morning. She's going to make up a photo booth. And so that all the families, and even if you're single, you want to take some pictures, and we're gonna have a good, we're gonna have a great time, and we'll probably have a few refreshments for people hanging around back there. It won't be nothing super fancy, but just something so that while people are taking pictures, you can have coffee, you can have refreshments or whatever. But we're just gonna have a great time. Amen. We're gonna have a great time, and, um, and, and and be wonderful with one another, and enjoy each other's. She's she's all excited. Yes. She's all excited. Amen. Amen. And I told her, I said, I know you do a great job because she, she's good at that. Yes. Amen. And so yes. God is raising people up. Yes. And everything. Yes. So we're excited yes. about the goodness of God. Yes. Amen. And then we have a baptism coming up. All right. I'm not done with my <laughs> preliminaries. <laughs> What's that? What is he going to say? He is Wilson? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. She's going to put it together and then let me see it. And then we can say, okay, adjust it, do this, do that. But we definitely, that's, that, that would be a great, that would be a great thing. Yeah. He is risen. Amen. Okay. Because he is. Where am I getting baptized? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're, it's tentative, we are tentatively <laughs> planning to have a baptism. You know, Palm Sunday is the 24th. Well, we'd like to have a baptism on Saturday the 23rd. Yes. Okay. So I will let you guys know for sure. Amen. I got to get things uh, lined up with the pastor over at the church that allows us to use the pool. And um, it's, it's really not a pool. It's actually a baptistry. And um, it's real nice. Yeah. We, we did that last year. I think it was last year. And Big Mike got that. Right. But, oh. but, and, uh, but we, we have some people that want to be baptized. So we're going we're gonna to do that. But I'm still... Uh, uh, will assist me, amen, as, um, and so we're excited, Yes, sir. we're excited, amen. so anyway, enough of preliminaries, all right, at this time, Reverend Steele is going to come, and uh, minister, we appreciate Reverend Steele tonight, and we'll receive the tithes and offerings in just a little bit, all right, make sure you might support it, amen, you can turn your please. Above, 
Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And then skipping down to verse 32 in the same chapter, Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And with the help of the Lord, for a short time, as God leads us, we're preaching on a message entitled, Go Free or Die. Go Free or Die. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for the precious opportunity that you have afforded us to be in your house one more time. I pray now that you anoint your servant as he stands behind the sacred desk. I pray, God, that he preach with power and in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that your will will be accomplished in each and every one of our lives, and we will always be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Underground Railroad was a network of secret routes and safe houses established in the United States during the early to mid-19th century. It was used by enslaved African Americans primarily to escape into free states and from there into Canada. The network, primarily the work of free African Americans, was assisted by abolitionists and others sympathetic to the, to the cause of the escapees. And an abolitionist was one who favored abolishing slavery. Mm -hmm. The slaves who risked capture and those who aided them are also collectively referred to as the passengers and conductors of the Underground Railroad. Various other routes led to Mexico, where slavery had been abolished, and to the islands in the Caribbean that were not part of the slave trade. An earlier escape route running south toward Florida, then a Spanish possession, existed from the late 17th century until approximately the year 1790. However, the network generally known as the Underground Railroad began in the late 18th century, and it ran north and grew steadily until the Emancipation Proclamation was signed by President Abraham Lincoln. Excuse me. Yes, sir. What year was that? One estimate suggests that by 1850, approximately 100,000 slaves had escaped to freedom via the network. And the Emancipation Pro Proclamation was, was a document that was signed by President Lincoln that declared all persons held as slaves within the re rebellious states are and henceforward shall be free. Yes. And the final proclamation was brought forth on January 1st, 1863. For the fugitive slaves who rode the Underground Railroad, many of them considered Canada their final destination. Yeah. An estimated 30,000 to 40,000 of them settled in Canada. And an important figure of the Underground Railroad, and you may have heard of her before, a lot of people know about her, a very, very central figure was a woman by the name. Harriet Tubman. Yeah. She was an escaped enslaved woman who became a conductor on the Underground Railroad, leading enslaved people to freedom before the Civil War, all while, all while carrying a bounty on her head. But she was also a nurse, a union spy, and a woman's suffrage supporter. Tubman is one of the most recognized icons in American history, and a legacy has inspired countless people from every race and every background. Her motto was, we got to go free or die. Yes. Harriet Tubman yes. was born around 1820 Three on a plantation yes. in Dorchester County, Maryland. Yes. Her parents, Harriet Rick Green and Benjamin Ross, named her Araminta Ross and called her, affectionately called her, 
two inches. Short little lady, full of courage. Her admirers went on to call her, to call her General Tubman, or the Moses of her people. And what I read, it was a 
knowing the truth, by knowing Jesus in the reality. And he said, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Yes. Jesus can set you free tonight. Yes, God. He's the one. The Bible tells us that there's none other, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's not in religion. It's not in good works. It's not in any other name under heaven but the name of Jesus. Coming to him by faith, believing that he's the one that can set you free. I don't care who you are tonight or what background you have or what race or how much money you have. Because on the day of 
we look back to the cross. Yes. Amen. And the blood has not lost its power. It still has power to set men and women free. To make them free tonight. Free from that bondage of sin. Free from that, from that guilty conscience. Do you have a guilty conscience tonight? Something's plaguing you. I, I don't care. Maybe, maybe you say, I'm a Christian, but I've, I've gotten off the beaten path. Jesus can set you free tonight and give you that liberty and give you that peace that the world doesn't give, but it only comes up from being free by accepting Him in a reality. Yes, For knowing Him. The finished work of Christ. We have to believe in that. Believe in what he did. Do you believe that tonight? I believe what Jesus did. It changed my life. I wouldn't be here right now without telling you that. He changed my life one day from the individual I used to be. And I've never been the same. No, I'm not perfect. But I've never been the same. And I have no regrets about that. you invited Jesus into my heart in a reality because he set me free yes, yes, yes. by faith oh, by faith I'm reminded I was thinking about this you know we come to God sometimes but sometimes we get caught up in stuff mm -hmm. it can happen it can happen have you ever had it happen? Yes, I'd say so. And we don't realize. We don't realize that we're free in Jesus. Yeah. And I thought about this in the book of Acts. When Herod, chapter 12, stretched forth his hand, the Bible says, to back certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. It says, then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, apprehended Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him before quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing yeah. of the church of the God for him. Thank God. People yeah. pray for us. People pray yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. thankful for that tonight. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he spoke Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from off his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. He couldn't believe it. You ever have something happen, and it's just so surreal, and, and, and that really just happened? And when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews, which was to kill him. Yeah. Peter, when he came to himself, such an ecstasy, such a thought, such a trance that he was in, he couldn't believe that he was free. But when he came to himself, and he realized, I'm free, I'm no longer bound. And that's what we need to realize tonight, that we're free. If we need something Jesus, in reality, we just need to trust him with all of our heart. We believe it, we follow him. We need to appropriate that faith in our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, we do things for God. Yes, we're saved under good works. But we're free. We're free in Jesus. We're not bound. By sin, yes. by that guilty, uh, uh, condemning sentence against us, and by a guilty conscience, we've been made free, and free indeed, Amen. by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, God. We need to do that. Come to ourselves sometimes and say, hey, what am I doing? Yes. And you get back on the right track. Yes, yes. It's like when you're lying in a car. That front 
lambs out of alignment, and then they put the different meters on it or gauges, and they get it to where everything's lined up and I can go straight. Yeah. That's what we need to do spiritually sometimes. We've heard too much to go back into sin. And I used this a couple weeks ago. I'm reminded in the Old Testament when Joshua had led the children of Israel into the promised land. And he knew it was, he knew that it was a, a time for him to go like the way of other men of the earth. He gathered all the officers and the leaders together. And God spoke to them through Joshua. And he reiterated to them how that God had brought them out of the house of bondage and out of Egypt, out of that house of bondage, and what God had done for them, all the mighty works that they had seen and all the miracles. And he went on to say, I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I've given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards, which ye planted not to ye eat. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Basically, he was telling them what he was saying to them in essence. And it's really the same thing that Harriet Tubman was saying to the slaves that were getting discouraged and they wanted to go back. And I'm telling you the same thing tonight. I didn't buy a round trip ticket out of sin to go back into sin. Oh. I bought a one way ticket. Amen. And that, that, that's what they were saying. You knew what they were saying. Yes. The apostles said, We are not oh. them. That draw back out of provisions. But of them that believe in the saving of the soul. Looking at Jesus. Preacher, the author and finisher of our faith. We've heard too much. Yes. I've been in too many services. I've heard too much gospel. I've read, I've read too much. I've experienced too much. Oh, 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 That's, that's 
That's my goal tonight, is to go to heaven and to take others with me by the grace of God. Oh, yes. Tonight, you can be free. You don't have to stay bound by sin. It's your choice. And we say that in love tonight, not in a hard way. We just be saying it in love and in a straight way to you. Amen. Go free. Oh, or, or die in your sins. Oh, God. It's up to you. The Savior's already done everything he can do. The work is finished. It's finished. He said that on the cross, it is finished. It is finished. Yes. Now the ball is in your court, so to speak. What will you do with Jesus? God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. God, you're so wonderful tonight. Hallelujah. You know what? Let's just come. We all deal with thoughts of quitting sometimes, with difficulties, but let's just come up and just let God strengthen us tonight. I'm not going back. I'm going to be free or die, one or the other. I got to make it in. I got to get 